Manchester United versus Newcastle, second to last game in the season, and we need to speak about it. A little preview. Before I get into the game itself, and I, I'm saying this again, this is the second time I'm recording this because my mic just screwed up. OBS, I blame you. Rafael Varane, today, Wednesday, the 14th of May, announced that he will be leaving Manchester United at the end of the season. The termination of his contract, the completion of the years of his contract more so, Carabao Cup winner, 93 appearances in all competitions to date. Two goals for Manchester United, class personified. When we think about the potential pairing that was brewing between him and Alessandro Martinez and obviously the hurdles that prevented it from really becoming a mainstay in this Manchester United team injuries, for example. Varane's had his injury-riddled season. Alessandro Martinez this year has had his injury-riddled season. Just the amount of inconsistencies when we look at the entire back line. It is a shame that we didn't get to see that partnership for a sustained period of time, especially given the, the defensive record last year. To be fair, it was decent. It was decent. We had our moments. We had our extremely bad moments. But it was a decent defensive record in the Premier League. And, and Rafael Varane was a massive part of that. Same with Lissandro Martinez. Could be back on Sunday in the in the press that Eric Ten Hag announced that. So he's not going to be back for this Newcastle game. But just want to thank Rafael Varane for representing this club. When we think about the two clubs he was at before, Lens and of course Real Madrid. 300 plus appearances, multiple trophies, Champions Leagues, a World Cup winner. This is an, an extremely exquisite player. The only way I can describe him, exquisite the way he operates on and off the field, leads by example, just an excellent player at his peak. And I want it is a shame. Injuries, they're a part of the game. He comes to Manchester United, and obviously we don't get to, to see that maximum level of, of Rafael Varane. We we we've seen some great performances. Don't get me wrong, some really solid performances and stretches of games together with Alessandro or anybody else that he was paired with. But ultimately, it wasn't that peak Varane that we were going to see uh, in his tenure in Manchester. And sometimes you can put Casemiro in this category, right? Teams or players transfer over to teams in the wrong moment. I look at Casemiro and a Varane as luxury guys, right? Uh, but in order to implement those kind of players in teams... The squad itself needs to be in a position where they are well structured, they play well, and they, they need to they need those players that will bring them over the hump, that will allow them to jump over that hurdle and reach that next level, get to that next step. And I don't think Manchester United were at that stage in order to add a Rafael Varane, in order to add a Casemiro, and ultimately their talents have gone to waste. So overall, thank you, Rafael Varane, for representing Manchester United, wishing you the best and wherever you go next up in your future endeavours. And, and that'll be that. Great servant for, for what he was able to do. Obviously, he would have wanted to achieve so much more of a player of his calibre, but not everything works out. We know that as Manchester United fans with what we've seen over the last decade or so. On to the Newcastle game itself. Since winning the League Cup final in February, we've lost three straight games, two in the league, and of course, them knocking us out of the Carabao Cup. It wasn't a good defence of the competition. And uh, yeah, that's not an exaggeration. That may be being nice. It wasn't a good defence at all. But we have gone to an FA Cup final again, so maybe our fortunes can change there and we can replicate what the women's team were able to do in winning their first major honour. Uh, it was a difficult WSL season for Manchester United women's team, but they were able to get back to the FA Cup final where they suffered heartbreak last year, losing to Chelsea, and they were victorious. 4-0 win against Tottenham, so shout out to them. I'm going to say that again. At Old Trafford, at home, in the league against Newcastle United. We haven't lost a game against them at Old Trafford since December of 2013. We've got a throwback name here, Johan Kabai, who scored a 1-0 victory on the day 
for Newcastle. We haven't lost since then. So it's been a long time, a very long time. We have a decent record in that regard. But <laughs> when you look at this season, Manchester United's team, nine defeats at home in the league. We've done that on only five separate occasions in the entire history of this wonderful club. Uh, five. Only five times. This could be the sixth time if we lose another home game in the league. So hopefully that doesn't happen. And I noted this this down specifically because I wanted to read it out. There are three, three separate records that we could break come the end of this campaign. United head into their penultimate game of the campaign, sitting eighth in the table with just 54 points and a goal difference of minus four. The lowest they finished in the Premier League era is 7th under David Moyes. He had seven months, I believe, as manager, was sacked. Ryan Giggs became the interim. Their poorest, lowest, poorest, what the hell am I saying? Their poorest points total was 58 in 21-22. And not since 1989-1990 in the old Division 1 if they finished with a negative goal difference. So there are three negative records that could be broken Hopefully not, but if they are, I'm sure they will be covered on social media, on television, all media platforms watch this space. Newcastle have had a very difficult season. There are similarities with how they've suffered with injuries and how we've suffered with injuries. And this is them coming off their best season in many, many years since the, the new takeover, of course, finishing in the Champions League, competing in the Champions League. I think they went out in the group stages, but they defeated PSG. They were competitive, had a draw at the San Siro against AC Milan. They had some really promising performances in the Champions League, just weren't able to put it together in the, in the latter stages of that group. And then the whole Champions League format's about to change, so that should be interesting next year. We won't be in it. We'll be in either the Conference League, Europa League, or maybe none of them at all. We'll have to see how this season concludes. But a couple of doubts on their side. We've got Alexander Izak, their top scorer. Absolutely brilliant forward in my opinion. One of my favourite forwards in the league. The nonchalance, his ability, his, his movement inside, outside of the box. He can score a multitude of goals. He can drop deep. He can carry the ball forward. Just an excellent striker overall coming into the Premier League. And he's had injury struggles of his own. When we look at that first season, he was in and out of the team. Callum Wilson was holding it down. But he's kind of shrugged them off now. We're seeing the best of Alexander Isak. And there's probably more growth in the player too. So he could become one of the top, top goal scorers in Europe. One of the top strikers, one of the top players in Europe, in my opinion, just with the skill set and the versatility that he has in that number nine position. And uh, so he could potentially be missing through illness. Uh, Eddie Howe said that he missed training yesterday and we're hoping that he can be integrated into training today. So we'll have to see if he will be available. Callum Wilson is also a doubt for the game tomorrow. The good thing about Newcastle is, despite all of the injuries, they've been able to work around it. Unbeaten in seven of their last eight after being knocked out of the FA Cup to Manchester City, I believe, in the quarterfinals. When you look at the contrast between them and us, we haven't really been able to find any, any uh, type of form in, in, in any part of the season. With all of the injuries we've suffered to the back line, midfield, forward line, we just haven't been able to, to strike up any form together. And we've seen Eric Tenar constantly in press conferences speaking about how the injuries have contributed to a lack of continuity and consistency. I know a lot of fans, including myself to a certain extent, don't want to be hearing that every single week because at the end of the day, there are players available and players that you need, players that should be wanting to, to stake a claim. A claim. To get into that first team, that starting eleven, to want to try their very best, and ultimately that hasn't been the case all season long. It hasn't been the case at all. Whereas Newcastle, they've been able to strike together a good uh, bit patch of form towards the end of this season, and that's why they find themselves in a position to get back into Europe. It may not be that Champions League spot, but they'll be able to potentially get back into the Europa League 
and go from there and, and hope that next season will be completely different in regards to their fortunes in the medical department. Whereas us, I have to question, continue to question what's going on in that medical department, but also strength and conditioning, just the overall preparation in preseason, during the season. I just don't think that has been good enough at all at any stage of the campaign for Manchester United. And that's why we're seeing players drop like flies because they didn't prepare well. They haven't maintained themselves well as a collective. And that is the result. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Shout out to Mark for, for bestowing that wisdom upon us all, upon me first. But I can also spread it out to you guys. I'm sure you've heard that saying as well. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. And I feel like for Manchester United, that has been the case for far too many years now. News on some potential returns. Injured players, Lissandro Martinez is set to return to the squad for this Newcastle game, which is good news. I know I said in the previous preview, I would just save him for the FA Cup final. But if we can get a little bit of minutes under the belt in those legs, that would be great. I just hope he can shake off these injury issues now because I feel like, again, mismanagement of players, potentially being rushed into the squad, getting them to come back sooner than they need to and... and you know, having that responsibility that they need to return to the squad. A player as important as Lissandro Martinez, you can't be doing that. You have to, you have to tread on thin ice when, when there are situations like that. You can't rush them into a situation where they could re-injure themselves, especially with the lower foot injury that he had. And then it, re it was reoccurring again. And you just can't do that stuff with important players in the squad. You can't risk... Their, their futures, their football careers overall, because a guy like Lissandro has so much to give in his career. But if you rush him back from injuries, you force him to take injections and just different little stuff like that, it will affect the player, any player, in a negative way many, many years down the line. Maybe not in the immediate, but many years down the line, it will affect the longevity of any player. And we've seen that in the past. Marcus Rashford, Bruno Fernandes, and Willie Camwala was mentioned. As we'll have to see on those players in terms of returns, game time decisions, probably late fitness tests. We did see Willie Camwala on the bench. I think he came off the bench against Arsenal. Fact check me in the comment section, but I'm sure he came off the bench against Arsenal. Uh, Bruno Fernandes has missed two games in a row for the first time in his club career. Just such an ever-present player. And I know there have been rumours. There has been rumours recently of him potentially thinking about leaving the club. We'll have to see what happens in that regard. Eric Ten Hag has stated his importance to the team, to the squad. He's club captain. I'd find it very hard to believe that he's considering leaving the club based on the responsibility that has been bestowed upon him. And his feeling about Manchester United itself, Marcus Rashford, has also missed the last few games. Very difficult season for him. And uh, there were some scathing comments by Wayne Rooney. I'm not saying he was alluding to Marcus Rashford, but he was saying to some of these injured players, well, basically they can still play. It's easy when there are things in important games coming up for you to say, well, I'm not ready to play. There were some scathing comments. I'm not saying whether it was true or not, but, you know, that's another thing in the media that has done the rounds recently. So we'll have to see on, on those three players if they will be able to return. I doubt they'll have... They'll all be starting if they can return, especially with the time each of those players have spent out. Willie Camboire is probably the best suited to be able to start in, in that Newcastle game. And even then, he'll probably just come off the bench, depending on the availability of, of players we have. Casemiro started at centre-back the last few games. Johnny Evans, uh, I don't think he's fully fit himself. He was forced to come back in uh, a couple games ago now against Crystal Palace, um, Rafa Varane, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see what happens between those guys. Rafa Varane won't be returning for this game. He'll be back on Sunday, hopefully, though, against Brighton. So we'll have to see, and that will be his uh, second-to-last send-off, hopefully, with the FA Cup final. Can we win it now? The Champions League for Varane? No, we need to win it regardless. I hope we do win it, but it's going to be a difficult task against Manchester City especially depending on what happens in this title race. Tottenham versus Manchester City today. 
uh, on at the time of recording on Tuesday. Big, big game there. Obviously, Manchester City have that game in hand and Arsenal fans all over the world are hoping that Tottenham can get a result to uh, make them the favourites all of a sudden. They're leading the race slightly on goal difference. So if it's a draw, they'll be ahead on goal difference. If City lose... Arsenal will have the chance to get ahead. So we'll have to see what happens there. But any depending on what happens in that title race, we could have a, a different Manchester City in terms of motivations. So motivations and drive. But we will see. That team just seems unbeatable come the final stages of the season all the time. But nothing before the time, ladies and gentlemen. Get your score predictions in the comments. You can predict the starting eleven as well. Let me know what you think, who, who you think's going to start, how you think the game's going to go in terms of flow, in terms of just events in general. We shall see, ladies and gentlemen, to those traveling to Old Trafford, enjoy the game. For those watching at home, like myself, enjoy the game too. Ladies and gentlemen, hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new. Share to your friends and frenemies and look out for myself. And my twin bro Cappy's reaction a day after the game. The United Twins will be back on deck. Until then, I'll see you lots in a bit.